Hi everyone, it's Alex from the Sigma, and to today, hold on. Um, well, working from home has its treats, but also its challenges. Oh. So let's start once again. Hi everyone, this is Alex from the Sigma and Sophia as well, having her peanut butter sandwich. And today we're going to talk about how to migrate your phone system to the cloud. <laughs> Uh, with business voice and please don't forget to hit the like and bell icons and subscribe to our channel to know when new videos are released no. isn't it Sophia they should do it right Hello. okay Hello. Hello. <laughs> all right Last year, I recorded a video when Microsoft Business Voice was just released. Since then, lots of new features have been added. The administration portal has changed considerably. The video has helped many organizations to make the first step into the cloud, especially in the UK, Canada, and US. We're going to go through a quick overview of Business Voice, including its main features, pricing, requirements, and jump into the deployment steps. You should be the IT administrator for your company, or then have a technical person to do the deployment on your behalf. There are many moving parts to make a good IT system work as a whole, telephony is just another tool added on top of your portfolio. Please ensure to follow the best practices with your IT before you try Microsoft Business Voice. And if in doubt, uh, ask for assistance from a specialist. Microsoft Business Voice is an evolution of your classic PBX or VoIP system. Typically, you would need a system dedicated to deal with your phone calls, like some solutions from Cisco, Avaya, Siemens, 3CX. They would work generally as a silo, unaware of your productivity and collaboration tools, like Microsoft Teams, for example. With Business Voice, we add telephony on top of Microsoft Teams. That means your collaboration with files, conversations, calendar, meetings, now has also telephony on top of it. With a regular phone number, you will never need to upgrade your phone system again, as it is a cloud service. It is always up to date. You can replace your old phone system completely with it. Be an old-fashioned PBX using ISDN lines, which in many countries are being completely eradicated, or uh, even another more modern VoIP system. It supports regular phone numbers, which can be migrated from any other provider, including toll-free numbers. You can make phone calls from your desktop computer, from your laptop, a Mac, a cell slash mobile phone, desk phones as well. It requires zero setup from the end user. They just need to type the username and password, which is the same as their Office 365 is one single identity and they're good to go. There is no need to create another set of credentials, use another system, it's all part of one single entity. All these standard features that you're used to, for example, voice announcements, menu-driven call routing, call queuing, are present. You can route calls to different groups of people, transfer calls, conference calls, manage the caller ID for each user or manage the caller ID for groups or even for the whole company. Pricing-wise, Business Voice in the US costs $20 per user per month and includes 3,000 minutes to call US and Canadian numbers. In Canada, it costs $22.50 and also gives the same amount of 3,000 minutes to call Canadian numbers and US numbers. In the UK, Business Voice costs £12 per user per month and gives 1,200 minutes to call landlines and mobile numbers. If you have more than 50 users, it may be more cost effective to use direct routing. It allows you to use any certified SIP provider, which you can choose, it doesn't need to be anything related to Microsoft, to add those minutes to your Microsoft phone system. It is similar, but not the same as Business Voice. Think about it as Business Voice without the minutes included. It's a cheaper license, but again, it only makes sense if you have enough users to make savings with economies of scale. It is a case-by-case -case analysis, as there are far too many variables to account for to give you a precise answer. It depends on your case. And now, without further ado, let's start the deployment. The first step is to have your Microsoft Office 365 environment configured properly, with your domain verified and set up. We need to purchase Microsoft Business Voice licenses for our end users and assign it to them. You can purchase the licenses yourself or ask a Microsoft partner to buy and apply them on your behalf. Also, ensure you buy virtual user licenses 
which will be used by resource accounts at a later stage. Emergency locations need to be set up for our offices so authorities can track the location of the call quickly if needed. Ensure to print the agreement and keep it safe for future reference. Now we need to create the resource accounts for the auto attendants. This will depend on how your business work. Here in my example, I'm creating the auto attendants for several different departments of my business. These accounts are created with login blocked as they are service accounts and we will assign virtual user licenses for them later. I suggest you use a standardized naming scheme for them to make them easy to identify and maintain later. In my case, I use RA for resource accounts, dash AA for auto attendant, and then the name of the auto attendant function. Now it's time to create the resource accounts for call queues. This will handle the incoming calls after the caller selects which department they want to reach. The call will enter a queue and ring a group of people. Ensure to follow a naming scheme for them as well. In my case, I use RA for resource account, CQ for call queue, and then the name of the call queue. Now we need to assign the virtual licenses that we purchased earlier on to all the resource accounts we just created. If you created the accounts with a good naming scheme, it is quite easy to search for them. Once we do that, we can apply the licenses to all of them at once. Ensure to change the resource account's location to the country you want to use phone numbers, otherwise you won't be able to assign them. It's time to purchase the numbers for our users and services. First, I'm going to order user numbers by giving the order a name, selecting a country, the number type, the city which is based on the emergency location you created earlier on, the area code and the quantity of numbers. If you order a block of numbers, Microsoft will try to deliver them as a sequence. For the service number order, the process is pretty much the same. You just need to select auto attendant or call queue. I recommend starting with just auto attendant at this stage. Assigning numbers to a call queue is not required for our deployment procedure. Also, I'm going to purchase a service number in another country, in this case, the US. This will allow me to have one single phone system call routing with as many different numbers on as many different countries as necessary. Now, let's assign these numbers to the required resource accounts. We need one resource account for each number we want to use. Meanwhile, we need to assign Microsoft Business Voice licenses to the end users. We can do this in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Back to the Teams Admin Center, let's assign phone numbers to the end users. It will take a couple of minutes to apply. We need to set up your company holidays and assign them to the auto attendants. We can then trigger different call routing depending on the holiday, for example, forwarding the calls to a different group, number, or just to voicemail with a special message. You can set up each day individually, a range of days, and also different days as a single holiday entry. We need to complete a few steps before we create the call queues. First, we need to create some groups to manage the membership to distribute the calls and voicemails. I recommend using security groups instead of Microsoft 365 groups, unless you have a very specific requirement to do so. Let's also create a group for voicemails. It needs to be an email-enabled security group 
as it will distribute voicemail via email to all members of that group. Now we can start creating our call queues following the same naming scheme of the groups we just created. Assigning the right resource account to each one of them, setting up the language, greetings and music on hold, add the right security group to the call queue, the routing method, uh, presence-based routing, adjust the ringing time and then adjust the size of the queue and the timeout. Plus, what happens when either of them is triggered? I suggest you set up a voicemail to each overflow and timeout with a pre-recorded message, or then you can also type your own message, which will be read by Stephen Hawking's voice. I'm now setting up several different call queues because each one is going to serve a very specific purpose on my auto attendant, like pressing one for something, two for something else, but also there are the sub menus and we want to control each one of those in very granular detail. I'm creating nine call queues in total and each one of them will handle one of the sub menu options of my auto attendant. The final piece of the puzzle is the auto attendant, which will orchestrate how all these call queues and the sub auto attendants will work together. The auto attendant is the interactive voice menu. In our case, we have three main options to begin with, sales, support and accounts. Each of them will have their own options as well to direct the call to the right department. Use the resource account name for the auto attendant. Select time zone, language, and switch on voice inputs. Select play menu, upload a recorded message, or type something. Assign four dial keys from number one to four, and change them from operator to voice app. Now you can create the voice commands, which are useful for people to say the option they want instead of pressing a key. That is useful if someone is calling, for example, while using a hands-free on their car. Each destination will be a call queue we created earlier. Set up your normal opening hours. For the days you are closed, just clear the start and end time. Choose what happens for calls outside of working hours, playing a greeting message and then going to voicemail. Select the holidays you want to include and any custom greeting and action. Configure if you want to allow external callers to find internal people by their name. You could, for example, exclude a CEO from the list so people don't try to get directly in touch with them. Add the resource account of the same name scheme as your auto attendant. Now I'm going to add the other two sub auto attendants as I've just added support. Now it's time for sales and then account options. After this, we can create the main auto attendant that will handle all these three sub auto attendants. Now let's create the main auto attendant that will manage all the sub auto attendants, which then take care of directing the calls to the right call queue. Again, use the same naming scheme as the resource account, and the remaining process is similar to what we have done before. The only difference is that instead of making each option to call a call queue, we will make it call another auto attendant 
which are the sub auto tendons we created earlier on. To migrate phone numbers from your existing phone system, you need to submit a migration form to Microsoft, which will verify who you are and if you have the authority to migrate these numbers away. Microsoft will assign a migration date, which will happen during normal working hours and depends on your existing provider willingness to happen. If you require the number migration to happen outside your normal working hours, you will need to take the direct routing option for your migration. And now to conclude the deployment and my opinion on Microsoft Business Voice. Uh, I generally believe it is a very cost-effective solution when you consider how simple and elegant the solution is. It is not the cheapest by any means. You need to consider if ease of use and tight integration has any value to you. There are cheaper and more feature-rich alternatives out there. Cisco will end up costing you an arm and a leg. Swix, it's very comprehensive, but it will cost more in support tickets and maintenance than the system itself leaving asterisk as one of the most cost-effective alternatives in the end. I've supported, I have deployed all these solutions. They can be interesting in some niches, in some markets. I think overall, Business Voice can fulfill, I would say, 80% of business needs while integrating fully with Office 365. It's like one single entity. Think about this other phone system that they will be standalone. They always will work on its own. They always need to have their own credentials, a different team to support them as well, you can train your own IT support to support Business Voice. I think it's a no-brainer to go for Business Voice when you're already an Office 365 customer. It's just another service added on top of what you have. If you have more than 50 users, I highly suggest you considering direct routing. It is a more cost-effective and flexible solution that can use any other provider to um, provide you the minutes. Microsoft allows you to use any provider as long as they are certified. Please like the video if it was useful for you and subscribe to our channel as well hit the bell icon to receive notifications when we release new videos if you would like to hire a sigma to support or provide you any consultancy please check the contact details down below the video description thank you very much for your time and i hope this video is useful for your organization thank you again bye bye